Okay, quick review. So let's have you talk to your partner. Which graph is sine, which graph is cosine? You have two graphs, black or blue. Which one is which? All right, Aaron. So the blue one is what? Cosine. Correct. So y equals cosine x. Oh. <laughs> okay, so. Yes, so you can tell which one is sine and cosine by where they start. So sine always starts at 0, 0, and cosine always starts on the top in a maximum. All right, next. Let's see how much we, rec we recall from last year. Oh, no. hmm. That was like the last part. Yeah, that was the last part of our year last year. What is period? What does period mean of the graph? Okay, the period is 2 pi, but what does period mean? That's all I know. <laughs> it's like... How long? Yeah? Yes, how long cycle? Yeah. Okay, put that into a sentence. <laughs> how long the cycle is? How long the cycle is? How Define long? cycle. <laughs> Okay, yes, very close. How long for this graph to repeat itself? Yeah. How long does it take for this graph to repeat itself? So the fastest way for me to figure that out is to find the similar parts. When does the similar part repeat itself again? So I try to look at the similar part. So for example, this cosine graph, I will look at the maximum to the maximum. So I don't look at 0 to 0 because it could move. And then you can see here within one cycle or within one period, there are uh, two zeros. So then it's going to be very confusing. So I don't do that. I look at the top versus the top or the bottom versus the bottom. That way I'm not confused. So then I take a look on uh, cosine. It starts at 0 and ends at 2 pi. So that means the period is 2 pi. Okay, so the, for the sine graph, um, I can't see the other side very well. So I'm going to look at the minimum to minimum. So minimum to minimum, you can see that it starts at negative pi over 2, ends at 3 pi over 2. The total length is 2 pi. So it's the same for this, these two graphs. Next one. So we're doing vocab review right now. What is the amplitude, the amplitude of both graphs? Oh, uh, cosine is one, right? Okay, cosine is one, sine is also one. How do you know what the amplitude is? That's the highest point, right? Kind of. Don't remember. <sighs> Waiting for answers. But, okay, the yes, it is A, but um, <laughs> so the amplitude is from the middle to the top or from the middle to the bottom, so how high that is. If that is very hard to see because sometimes it doesn't start at zero, then you take the total height and divide by two because the starting point has to be in the middle. Okay, so the amplitude for these is like right here. So this is the amplitude. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at actual equations. So uh, sinusoid equations. So sinusoid just means uh, like a cosine or sine graph. Sinusoid. That word's going to come up a lot, so just keep that in mind. Um, the equations are going to kind of look like all your transformation equations. You have A and you have your parent function. You have Bx plus C, and then you have a D outside of this whole thing. So let's first talk about amplitude. Amplitude is going to be A, but not just A, it's the absolute value of A. Because amplitude has to do with the height. So there is no such thing as a negative length, so that has to be absolute value. Okay, so the number in front always tells you how high it's going to go, or how low it's going to go. Period has to do with B. But period has a formula. It's 2 pi divided by absolute value b. b is the number next to x. b is the number next to x. Next one. 
uh, frequency. Frequency is one over period. So if you remember the formula for period, it's very easy to remember frequency. It's just one divided by that. So it's the reciprocal of a period, which means you just flip the period formula. So it's going to be absolute value b over 2 pi. OK, in a sine and cosine graph, when we talk about moving left and right, we don't say left and right. We say phase shift. So we would say there's a phase shift of how many degrees? We don't say it moved left this or it moved right this. The phase shift has to do with C, but it's a little bit tricky. So if you kind of recall from last semester, I said if there is a number next to X, you have to factor it out. If you don't factor it out, you're going to be affected by the horizontal stretch or compress, and that's going to affect how far you actually move. So please make sure you always factor that out. Then C over B has, is going to be your phase shift. Yes? OK. So C over B. And the way you move is the same as before. If it's greater than 0, you're going to go left. If it's less than zero, you're going to go right. So it's the opposite sign. The last part up and down is uh, the same as before. It's the number you add at the end, which is D. And that is greater than zero, it's gonna go up. Less than zero, it's gonna go down. All right, so just a review. Amplitude is the height of the sinusoid wave. Okay, wave because it looks like a wave. Divided by two. So it's the total height divided by two if you can't figure out the amplitude from a graph. Let's do some practice together. <coughs> determine the amplitude of the sinusoid and then determine the transformation. So let's do A together. What is the amplitude? Yes. So it's absolute value A, which is going to be 1 half, the number in front of the function. OK, very easy. What is the transformation? What do you guys think? What does the 1 half do? Um, <laughs> oh, what compressed? Sorry, I think you said it right, but I didn't hear you. You don't know? Is there a vertical compression there? Yes. Oh, I meant like, oh, okay, so it exists in here too. Yes, it does exist in here. So this is going to be vertical compressed. One half. Um, I think you guys should be pretty good. OK, so let's have you try B, and then we'll do C together. Let's start with Ashley. B, what is the amplitude? Good. Mark, give me one transformation. Uh huh. And then Blake, the other one? Mm hmm. All right, let's look at C. So in order to figure out C, you have to, uh, well, amplitude is pretty easy to figure out. So what do you guys think the amplitude is? Yeah, three. How do you know it's three? This says four. This says negative two. So how do you know that's three? Yeah, the total height is six. Divide by two. So the amplitude is 3. So it's half of the total height. So amplitude is going to be 3. Mm, transformation. This is a little bit trickier. Um, it depends on what you think this parent function is. What do you guys think it, it is? It could be either. So this is most similar to which, transform, uh, which parent function? Cos uh, cosine, right? 
because yeah, cosine starts on the top. It could be sine, but then you have more transformations to write. Uh, let's just say it's cosine, then cosine with an amplitude of three should have started here and look like something like this. So then the question is, how did I get from the original uh, uh, function to that shape? Uh, move. Oh, you phase. Uh, no, no, no. You're right. It is move up and down, but which one? Up. Yeah, up one. So from the original graph of up one, and then what else? Yeah, vertical stretch by three. So the amplitude. Okay, so that's a little um, exercise on uh, amplitude. Now we're going to practice period. Okay, so let's look at this graph. Oh, not this one. I'm sorry. Okay, so looking at this graph, sine and cosine graph. So we're going to move the sine graph so it looks like the cosine graph. Okay, first of all, how much is sine graph and cosine graph off by? Oh, huh? Pi over 2. Yes, pi over 2. So if you look at the highest two points, you can see that they're off by pi over 2, right? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the sine graph so it looks like the cosine graph. Which direction would I need to push it? Push it to the left by pi over 2, right? How do I say pushing a graph to the left? Uh, yes, phase shift, but then if I were to write an equation, would it be a plus pi over 2 or minus pi over 2? I'm pushing to the left. Huh? Plus. Yes, plus. So then we can just say that the cosine graph is the same as the sine graph if I push it to the left by pi over 2. Yes? I don't have to push it to the left, right? I can also push it to the right and make it look exactly the same. If I push the sine graph to the right, how much do I have to push so it looks like cosine? <coughs> so look at the peak to the peak. How, how, how far are they off from each other? Uh, 3 pi over 2. So I can push it to the right. So if I say pushing it to the right, do I add it or subtract it? Subtract. So then I would say cosine x is the same as sine x minus 3 pi over 2. And you can see that one of them going to the right is pi over 2. Going to the, uh, I'm sorry, going to the left is pi over 2. Going to the right is 3 pi over 2. They add together to get 2 pi, which is the period. Okay, so you can only get, like, be right on top of each other if they have the same period, right? And then for this one, the period is 2 pi. Yeah. Where did you get 3 pi over 2? Um, if you look at the sine graph versus the cosine graph, which is right here, oh, okay. they're off by 3 pi over 2. <coughs> okay, so now your task is to do the other one. How do you move the cosine graph so it looks just like the sine graph? So sine graph equals cosine what? Okay, so period is the length for one cycle of the wave. Cycle means it's a complete cycle, meaning it's going to repeat itself. So I usually look at maximum to maximum or minimum to minimum. Um, so let's look at these examples. Determine the period of the sinusoid and then determine the transformation. All right, so we got to remember our period um, equation. It's 2 pi over absolute value b. B, again, is the number multiplied to x. So let's look at this question. A, what number is B? 1 over 3, the number multiplied to x. So x over 3 is the same thing as 1 third times x. So 1 third is B. 
Okay, good. Yes. Okay, so this is going to be 2 pi over 1 third. Can you guys do the math in your head? Flip up 1 third, 6 pi, yes. So that means it takes 6 pi for this cycle to complete, so it's a very long graph. Next, transformation. This is a little bit tricky. Tell me one transformation that you can see very clearly. Oh, reflect y. Oh, no. no. Okay, reflect x axis. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. Uh, a. We're still on A. Uh, reflect x axis. And then what's another one? Okay, vertical stretch two. The last one's the tricky one. It is horizontal. But is it stretch or compress? Yeah, is it stretch or compress? Hmm. <laughs> How many people say stretch? How many people say compress? Oh, people in the middle did not vote at all. Don't know <laughs> what's going on. Okay, talk to your partner. Is it stretch or compress? Okay, horizontal stretch, raise your hand. Compress, raise your hand. Okay, but, but <laughs> okay, uh, stretch. Yeah, wait, why? Why? I forgot about that. Okay, yes, we forgot it. All right, let's look uh, here. So I know people forgot it, so I wrote it there again. Stretch and compress has to do with the number in the denominator. <laughs> in the denominator. Okay, so whatever, whatever that number is, if that number is bigger than 1, it's going to stretch. If that number is between 0 and 1, it's going to compress. So that number has to be in the denominator. Has to be x over just a number, that entire number. So when we go back to this original question, it's x over 3. 3 is bigger than 1. Not the one third. One third is for B, but for stretch and compress, just the number in the denominator. Okay, so it gets people every single time. Let's try another one. Uh, B. What is the period? Two pi over absolute value B. Huh? Yes, pi. It is not negative pi because we're talking about a length, so it can't be negative. Let's talk about transformation. <laughs> okay, vertical stretch three, definitely. Yes, reflect y axis. The last one, this two, what do we do with it? Yes, horizontal compress, one over two. All right, so this is where this gets a little crazy. That number has to be in the denominator. That number is not in the denominator. We gotta put it in the denominator. To do that, you find the reciprocal. The reciprocal of negative two is negative one half, and then put that whole thing in the denominator. So that number is just one half. Okay, if you're not sure how that is done, so kind of think backwards. If I uh, actually simplify this, it's x over negative oh, one half. You flip it up, you get negative two. Understood. Right, so then a fast way to change a number to put it in the denominator is to put the reciprocal in the denominator. Okay, so that number is negative one half or just one half. So that number is smaller than one or between zero and one. So it has to be compressed. Okay, the last one, we're not gonna do transformation because we just did it on the previous problem. But what is the period uh, of this graph? Two pi. Yes, two pi. All right, next part, frequency. Frequency means the number of complete cycle within a certain uh, um, 
interval. So within this interval, how many times did you complete this cycle? Is kind of what frequency is. So um, let's find the frequency and find the transformation. All right, frequency, remember, is one over period. So it's just the reciprocal formula of period. So period was 2 pi over v. This is going to be v over 2 pi. So absolute value b over 2 pi. Let's talk about a. What number is b? What number is b? Oof. Wait, 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 which number are we talking about? A, A, sorry. Oh, A? Oh. What number is B? Huh? Two over three. Yes. Everything that's multiplied to X. Number multiplied to X. So it's two thirds times X. So B has to be two thirds. Are you guys okay? Okay. What does that simplify to? Two thirds over two pi. Pi over. Oh, no. Mm. What? <laughs> yes, 1 over 3 pi. Oof. <laughs> okay. Eventually, you're going to get very fast, I hope, <laughs> uh, in doing this. This is over 1, right? So it's going to be 2 thirds times 1 over 2 pi, times the reciprocal. That's going to cancel. Okay. Uh, you're going to get really fast. Then all you do is multiply these together. Uh -huh. 2 over 3 times 2 pi. Wait, wait, wait. Um, 2 over 3 times 2 pi. Okay, if that is too much of a shortcut for you, don't do it. <laughs> Eventually, you're going to come up with shortcuts yourself because you're going to be so tired of writing that over and over and over again. You're going to find a shortcut for yourself to do things fast. So if this shortcut is just like, whoa, I'm going to mi miss it every single time, then don't do it. Don't, don't take shortcut. Just write it. 2 thirds divided by 2 pi over 1. Divide by 2 pi over 1 means multiply by 1 over 2 pi. 2 cancels. 1 over 3 pi. OK. So don't take shortcuts if shortcut is going to mess you up. All right, so that's the frequency. Okay, uh, you guys okay doing the transformation on your own? I guess, yeah. Okay, all right. I will check back at you in 30 seconds. All right, let's go to Andy. What is one transformation? Oh, uh, yeah, for eight. Yes. Okay, and then Evan, the other one. <coughs> hmm. It's not, uh, okay, you said compressed by what? One third. Uh, no. Does Amanda have an answer? No. Penny? Horizontal something. Stretch or compress? Huh? Oh, not compress. It is stretch. So, uh, McKenna? No. Sally? Yes. Three over two. So you're going to take that entire number that's next to x. That is the entire two thirds. That entire two thirds need to have a reciprocal. That reciprocal is 3 over 2, and then you put 3 over 2 in the denominator. Okay? The entire number, not whatever comes in the denominator, because that is still multiplied to a 2, which we don't want there. Okay? Remember, it's x over the entire number. Okay, let's look at b. b we, it's the same problem as before, so we're only going to look at the frequency. So what do you guys think the frequency is? If, yeah, 1 over pi. So it's just the b over 2 pi. So that is 1 over pi. All right. Last thing before we graph. 
So we're not going to do transformation on this one because we already did it on the previous question. Good. I'm going to move on to the next page. Okay, last part, phase shift. Phase shift is the horizontal translation of the graph. So how much you're moving left and right? So let's look at this question. Write the cosine function as a phase shift of the sine function. That means you're going to write cosine x as if you were going to move the sine by moving sine left and right. Phase shift, remember, means left and right. So you're going to move sine left and right so that it matches with the cosine graph, like the sine graph becomes the cosine graph. So let's kind of go back, uh, let's go back to our first page of this lesson to look at the sine and cosine graph. Okay, let's try Iris. Sine function as a phase shift of the cosine function. So sine x is equal to cosine what? <coughs> mm -hmm. Or we can go the other way, which is cosine and then x plus 3 pi over 2. All right, we're ready to review how to graph sine cosine. Yeah, so here are some techniques if you forget. First, find the amplitude, right? You gotta know how high, how low it's gonna go. Second, the period. So you need to know how long this is gonna take for it to repeat itself. Third and fourth is kind of the same. So you're gonna try to figure out, is it gonna start at zero, zero, or you know, wherever it starts, or do we actually have some phase shift and uh, vertical shift? Um, and then there is a standard form to graph them. Okay, so let's start with a very normal sign. What is the amplitude for this graph? If you know the answer, just say it <laughs> so we can move on quickly. What is the amplitude for sine x? Good. What is the period? Period is 2 pi over b. 2 pi. All right, there's no h, there's no k, so there's no shift from where it should be. So we're going to just draw the normal sign. So first you draw uh, the amplitude, it's up one, down one from the center. So up one, down one, okay, one and negative one. Next, the period is two pi, so you draw a line at two pi. So this is how long it's going to take for it to finish. Next, you're going to break this into a quarter. So to break it into quarter, the fastest way is half and then half. So you're going to break this 2 pi into half. So that's going to be pi. Next, you're going to break that into half again. So now you create four quarters. So the fastest way to break anything into fourths is half and then half. Okay, now you have to remember this is how sine goes. Sine always starts at zero. And then it goes up, down, down, up. So up, the, first, the next thing that's going to happen is up at the quarter point. So go to the first quarter, go to the top, the amplitude. And then it's going to go down. So when it goes down, which is the next quarter, you're going to go to the middle part. Down again, so the third quarter goes to the bottom, and then up. And then you're going to connect the dots with smooth curves, or one smooth curve. <clears throat> you can do the same thing on the left. So this is one period, but let's say they want you to graph more than one period. So you're going to go to the left again. Uh, sorry, go to the left. So you're going to start at one period, half a period, quarter, and you're going to the left, so you're going to go down first, and up, up, down. Connect the dots. So this is the sine graph. Again, review. First thing, find the amplitude. Second thing, find the period. Break into half, break into quarters. Sine starts at zero, goes up, down, down, up. 
make sure you have the dots before you start drawing because eventually you're going to be analyzing your own graph. And if your graph is wrong, you would have a very hard time figuring out where you're increasing and decreasing. So please don't just freehand draw it. You got to make the dots first. All right, normal cosine graph. What is the amplitude? Everybody, one, what is the period? Two pi. OK, again, amplitude, one and negative one. One period, two pi. Break into half. <coughs> Break into half again. All right, we're ready to draw. Cosine graph is different from the sine graph. Cosine starts on the top and it goes down, down, up, up. So we're going to start at the maximum. Okay, start at the maximum. Goes down, halfway, down again to the bottom. Okay, down halfway, down all, all the way to the bottom, and then goes back up. And then connect the dots with a smooth curve. Okay, and then do the same thing on the left if you wanted to draw one more period. One period, half period, quarter periods, down, down, up, up. Okay, so quick review. Uh, I know a lot of you were not here last year, so uh, if this is new, just practice a few times. It, it's not too bad. Okay, let's do two practice and we are done for the day. <clears throat> A, uh, this one's pretty easy. I'll leave it for you guys later on. Let's try B. What is the amplitude? Five, good. What is the period? Remember period is, huh? Uh, yeah, pi. So two pi over B, B is two. Okay, so we're gonna, do, uh, and there's no shift, right? There's no left and right, up and down, so we're gonna start at the normal place. So up five, down five. One period is pi, so mark the uh, full period. Half of that is pi over two. Half of that again, the pi over fourths. This is a sine graph. So it starts at zero, zero, good. Okay, it starts at zero, zero. And this is a normal sine graph. There's no negative to reflect it. So it's gonna go up and then down, down, up. So up to the highest point, down to the middle again, down to the very bottom, and then back to the middle and you connect the dots. Okay, if you were to draw more, if you want it, uh, you would do it again. So one period, half period, quarter period, goes up, down, down, up. And then you would do the same thing to the left if you wanted to do that. Okay, I'm gonna help you on the period for the next one and then we're gonna uh, just let you draw the rest. What is the period for C? No, two. So two pi over pi, oh sorry, yes, two pi over B, B is pi. So then this is gonna be two. Uh, I have not gone over this, but I hope you're kind of asking yourself, what is the unit? So remember, this is the length, right? The period is the length. Well, the length must have a unit, right? So what does two mean? Two centimeters, inches? What does two mean? Hmm? It's two radian. So the period, how long does it take for it to repeat itself? That is a measurement in angles. So two pi over b, that's just angles. How, how many, uh, you know, how, what is the angle, is it, how many degrees or how many radians it required for this to repeat? And so usually it's in, you know, radian. And that two just means two radian, okay? 
So if you uh, were wondering what you meant. Okay, so go ahead and finish graphing C, at least one period, and then I will double check. Okay, so from what I've seen, you guys are pretty good. Half, half, half. Down, down, up, up. So it looks like this. Last part. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Um, let's make a sinusoid with period pi over 5 and an amplitude of 6. And it has to go through this point. Um, going through that point is going to be a little bit tricky, so let's just draw a, or write an equation of a sinusoid that has these two things. So amplitude of 6 means A must be what? 6. Negative or positive doesn't really matter. Okay, period is pi over 5. We have to find B. What is the period formula? Okay, 2 pi over B, so then just cross multiply. That would give you... B, so pi B is equal to 10 pi. So B must equal 10. We need a sinusoid, so what do you guys want to do? Sine or cosine? Sine. Okay, let's do sine. So this is going to be a very normal sine graph. So this is, let's just say, Y is equal to 6 sine 10 X. So I put A and B in there with sine. The question is, will this go through to zero? Okay, so let's try it on decimals. So if we were to look at this graph, we would see that the sine graph kind of goes like this and two zero is right here. So the graph is not going through two zero. In order for this graph to go through two zero, you would need to make sure one of the points goes through. And the fastest way to do that is if we just choose the, um, the starting point and then push it towards the right so that it starts at 2, 0. So to start this graph at 2, 0, you would uh, move it to the right uh, 2. Move it to the right 2 means you're going to subtract 2. And when you do that, you have to put that in the parentheses, 10 x uh, parentheses x minus 2, because if you don't, you're actually moving at, so if you were to do um, 6 sine, uh, 10 x minus 2 like that, you are actually moving 2 tenths of it, not the entire 2. So you got to put that in parentheses. And then now that we push or shift did the graph to the right two, this will actually yield a graph that crosses to zero.